What is up, everyone? Brandon First, a.k.a. First Report, representing the first Off the Bench podcast network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are first. Welcome in to the first of many NFL weeklies going forward. We've made it. We've got through the long, bleak summer uh, it is time for football. We are uh, about 25 hours away um, from when we're recording. We're recording on the 6th of September, um, one day before the NFL season kicks off and about four days before the whole shebang gets rolling on that full Sunday where you get this, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours of football if you choose. But with me, as always, we have uh, my co-host Raider Jim Martinez. You can find Mr. Martinez at Raider Jim 1090. How you doing tonight, sir? I am doing fantastic. Can't believe we're here already. We were just, uh, you know, lamenting. Uh, it seems like just a couple weeks ago about, oh my gosh, football season's over, and and then pretty soon NCAA basketball is going to be over. But here we are. Uh, getting ready to, to start up the football talk and then already start making notes for NCAA basketball. So life is good, my friend. Yes, sir. It is. Uh, obviously, if you're, you're, you're a football fan, this is the best part. You know, it's, I think in the NFL, you can make the case um, for the most amount of teams to be very competitive. Uh, I think the parity in the NFL is unmatched across uh, professional sports and it's definitely something to always keep an eye on. And, you know, going forward, I always say this, um, the first four weeks of an NFL season are the toughest time to bet. It's never easy uh, in the NFL because of that parity. But the first four weeks, myself personally, I definitely don't bet weeks one or two. Um, I at least want to just see the lay of the land because there's going to be a lot of um, uh, uh, of situations uh, in the next few weeks that we just either weren't ready for or we we completely misread, um, but you know that 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 is how we do it. Uh, that is essentially gambling in one way or another. But we are going to dive into some games um, a little later, at least give our honest opinions on them spread wise. But before we do that, um, just keep a keep an eye on what we're looking forward to this season. What are eyes on the storylines? Uh, just the thoughts on the NFL season. Uh, Raider Jim, I'll give you the honors. Uh, what are your thoughts as we dive into the twenty three twenty four NFL season? Yeah, I guess I paid a little more attention than I thought. I sat down to make notes and it's like, I'm not going to have anything to talk about. Now I've got like five pages of notes, a little uh, for most of the teams. I got a little something. I might just wait until we get to those games and put that out on the table. And I'll tell you, there's one thing, a couple things right off the bat, though, uh, the whole preseason thing. I know we've questioned it over the last couple seasons anyway, but this was a three games preseason. Look at the amount of in in injuries that we saw this preseason. And they really have to start taking a look at that. I don't know what they can do. I know they have to do that in order to pare down the rosters. But there's just something, the checks and balances need to be looked at and readjusted somehow. I don't have the answer. And then the other thing is, you know, I appreciate it. I saw Joey Bosa's back, or excuse me, Nick Bosa's back. Josh Jacobs is back. There's nothing I would have rather done in my career than to tell my bosses, I'm not going to come to work for 90 days. Okay. I'm really, you know, not until you agree to give me a raise. And really that's all like the, the, the mad rush season or, or the, the lion's share of workload. And I just don't show up for that. And then, Oh, we're going to play. You're going to give me a raise. I'm in. I think it's great. Why don't these guys just say, I don't want to go to spring training. Just yeah. give me my contract because that's basically what it boils down to. And then the third thing for me on my list is, for those of you who are also Major League Baseball fans, and you do not like the pitch clock, you are going to hate the new kickoff rule. Because I've been watching that, and it's like, well, why don't they just set the ball to 25 and forego the whole kickoff? Yeah. Um, it's it's There have been a lot of interesting thoughts about that um and before you go any further i would be remiss um coach uh his schedule has changed a bit so um we hope to get him on um a little bit later in the year uh if our schedules open up going forward but 
uh, coach always uh, uh, invited on. Um, and he's unfortunately, you know, he's, he's molding the minds of young men and women out there uh, in his teaching capacity. So uh, he's, he's teaching a class pretty much as we speak right now. So bigger and better things for him. But I, I guess you know, then I'll just have to make the comments and remarks about the saints. I can do. Oh that. yeah. We're going to, we're going to clip them and send them <laughs> to him every week. Uh, he thinks he's away. He thinks he's out of this. But he is not. Um, if anything, he's just essentially now uh, uh, yelling at people who have the microphone. So um, we'll see how that goes uh, going forward. But um, before we went any further, I did want to bring that up. But in terms of the kickoff in the preseason, I do wonder if we are getting a bit to a point of, you know, have we crossed the line of overreaction? Because you did talk about the kickoff. Why don't we just put it at the 25 at this point? Um, the, the, the Devin Hester's, the return specialist just don't really matter anymore, which is really unfortunate because that's how a lot of young players really got rolling and how they were able to make look Devin Hester. I think he was a cornerback and then they tried to move him to wide receiver. But look, if, if Devin Hester played in 2023, he would have been cut or he would be buried somewhere and. Maybe we'd see his, you know, maybe he gets five, 10 opportunities to return the ball a year. Um, I understand why they do it and things like that. I just, uh, it, it's going to be tough going forward um, to see that. But the preseason part of it, I, I feel like we'd just be better off just having these guys have behind um, closed door scrimmages or or just, you know, work with these. They already practiced together before most of these preseason games anyway just have a week of practice with the dolphins and the, and the Steelers or this or that. We kind of right. see it somewhat in spring training, or at least in Arizona, the Padres share a complex with um, the, the Mariners. And it's obviously very different baseball. You can kind of ease yourself into baseball. You can't really ease yourself or ease, ease back in football. It's such a 100% sport. I don't know what the answer is, but I don't think we have it in preseason. Um, and it's it's at the end of the day, a lot of what these rules do is they they speak about oh we're protecting the player. Meanwhile, all their a lot of other actions kind of would go towards the contrary. Obviously, you know now we have seventeen regular season games, um, so you know it, it's hard for me to believe fully that they're you know fully in on oh we're protecting the players. By the way. Um, you get one extra game this year. And I understand now, oh, well, they took a preseason game away. Well, for a lot of starters, no one played the fourth preseason game. So you literally did add a whole extra preseason game to the situation. Um, it, it's going to be very interesting to see that going forward. Um, if, if Goodell will uh, approach that. What I um, guess I'm looking at, uh, one of the main ones for me is the shoes and the legacy. I guess Jordan Love is going to have to uphold in Green Bay. Green Bay has an incredible track record when it comes to quarterbacks. I mean, uh, you see some of the best from, you know, essentially Brett Favre picking up the pedestal, not necessarily from um, Bart Starr, but, you know, he was the first. And then Favre straight into Aaron Rodgers. And, I mean, two quarterbacks over essentially, uh, what, 25, 30-year span. I um, mean, ask the Browns fans about how how many quarterbacks they've gone through. So we'll see how he does there. Really interested to see the 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 big difference in the AFC and NFC uh, competition level. I feel really bad for AFC teams because that is such a gauntlet. While the NFC is wide open, but kind of a, I don't want to say a race to the bottom, but not a you don't have to clear too many bars to be the third or fourth best team in this conference on paper. Um, and then to that same vein, how wide open the NFC North and NFC Souths are. You could make a case for all four or all eight in some of these cases, all eight of these teams to win their divisions. Um, so we'll see how that goes going forward. And the final one I keep in my eye on is very close to Raider Jim. It's in his jurisdiction. It is Sean Payton. Um, the return to yeah. football for Sean Payton can he resurrect Russell Wilson? Because look, if Russell Wilson can be turned into what we saw he was in uh, Seattle, watch out. I I'm not saying they're better in uh, Kansas City, but that division got a whole lot more interesting. Uh, if that is the case, Sean Payton might be Russell Wilson's last hope. But 
Um, we'll see that going that well, about that going forward, I should say. Any uh, extra thoughts you want to have, uh, Raider Jim? And on that, Richard Sherman made a remark two weeks ago, I think it was, and his comment is, if Russell Wilson doesn't have a banner year, he's really going to start damaging everything he had established. He said this is a very pivotal, pivotal uh, year for his old, his former teammate. So, and I like the guy, so I hope he does do well. There's only two games where I don't want him to do well, and that's when he's playing against the Raiders. But he's got Sean Payton. You got to think that's the great motivator, and that's going to be a perfect fit for uh, to you know keep him focused and and give him the motivation that he needs to get out there and have a better year. Agreed. And I, I think Richard Sherman really hit the nail on the head because Sean Payton did not come back um, to go four and 13 with an aging veteran quarterback. Yeah. So uh, yeah. And, and the, the new ownership, well, I mean, the Bolden family, I think was always willing to take those chances. Luckily they didn't have to too often. Um, but you know, look, the, the wall, I, I can't think of the name, but the Walmart family, if you will, um, who came in, I'm sure they they would be willing. Look, if Sean Payton says, you know, this didn't go well, we can trade up to go get a Caleb Williams or one of the, you know, Drake May, blah, blah, blah. But we have to pay Russell Wilson a lot of money to leave. You might see, I mean, there are plenty of other franchises that wouldn't do that. I think the Broncos are the ones that you would put into the category that would. Um, and like I said, I just think Sean Payton, essentially, that's his team from top to bottom. Um, yep. He is building and that's that team is going to have his fingerprint on it if he has anything to say about it going forward. But <clears throat> with that being said, it is time, of course, to talk about football and, of course, some point spreads, things like that. Once again, um, you know, still these these first two weeks, I, I, I never keep track because it's always a little ugly the first few weeks because we miss read a lot of off-season storylines, but we are going to start in the AFC West. We'll start in chronological order. It's going to be the first game of the new season. It's going to be an arrowhead, unfortunately for myself as an Eagle fan. It's not starting in Philly as, of course, the first game always starts the defending champs home field on that Thursday night. The Chiefs will be welcoming in the Detroit, uh, I almost said Detroit Tigers. I need to get baseball off my mind. Detroit Lions. Uh, the Chiefs are five-point favorites. The over-under sits at 52 and a half. All of these odds are courtesy of Bovada as of yesterday. Uh, Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Obviously, AFC West team, this is your jurisdiction. Chiefs hosting the Lions in the kickoff game of the season. Yeah, nosing around as I was making my notes, I even saw a couple, uh, a couple shots where it was four and a half. It had been dropped, too. Now, Detroit's going to be a lot better. They showed last year that they were improving. They're going to be real good this year, I think. And I really, really am not going to be surprised. I have to keep going back and forth, flipping pages. Uh, but I'm not going to be surprised if in the NFC East, you're not going to see Washington and Philadelphia, uh, which has nothing to do with the Lions. So I don't know why I went to that page. But I think you're going to see the Lions challenge for, uh, for the title in their division and now as far as the uh as far as the chiefs go we all have seen the news over the last couple of days it was just like oh my gosh what are we going to do travis kelsey's hurt if you're a chiefs fan there there was a book that dr seuss wrote where uh, they would pull a hat off a guy and he just always he said there was a gentleman that he rode the train with and he always sat behind the guy. And he said, the guy was always there. His hat was always just right. And he said, I always imagined that if I just pulled the hat off, another one was going to be there or another one would appear. That's kind of what these Chiefs are like. I remember when it was, uh, I thought, oh, they're done for. They got rid of Sammy Watkins. They got rid of uh, Tyreek Hill. Oh, what are they going to do? There goes the passing game. They didn't miss a step. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same case here. Kelsey. His knee isn't that bad. He will be back. If I was them, I wouldn't play him or I'd play him very limited tomorrow. Now, the Lions defense, Aiden Hutchinson could really, really make some trouble for Mahomes tomorrow if the Chiefs offensive line does not uh, do their job, which is the case for any football team. I'm not saying anything new. And also the Kansas City defense is kind of a question mark. So we'll see what happens. Is a lot of prognostics.
prognosticators think that this is Kansas City is going to start their decline or, you know, just a little bit? Possibly. That could be the case, but you know what? It's not going to happen in week one. I'm taking Kansas City minus four based on the four and a half point line that I saw somewhere. And I think it is going to go over 52. I think we're going to see some scoring. Yeah, always yeah. make sure you know diversify your uh, lines. Keep your keep plenty of uh, books if so needed, so you can find those lines. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting game going forward for Kansas City, as you said. Obviously, Kelsey, the hyper extension. Um, it's it also kind of works as like a mini buy early season buy. You know, when you play these Thursday night games, it's like you get through this game and then you get what ten days off until the next one. Um, now, obviously, if if you're going to get an injury three days before the opener um, is probably the best time. Obviously, there's no good time to be injured, but the, he's going to be perfectly fine going forward. This isn't a huge implication. It's not a it's not even a conference game. Um, so it, it's you know, I think Andy Reid can play it pretty safe. And like you said, look, Patrick Mahomes, I feel like Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, they put me in pads out there and, and, you know, as long as I get somehow, you know, some, some special bone serum that makes it that, that my bones don't break every time I get touched, I would probably, uh, be okay and look like I wouldn't be, um, out there now, obviously Kelsey is arguably the best tight end in football. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, like you said, it, he, he's got another target that's just going to fill in. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, we talk a lot of horse racing. That's kind of the new, um, you know, Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt. That is that 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 duo, that Belichick-Brady. Now, a little different because Andy Reid is so offensive-minded. Um, but I do like Kansas City here. Um, at, at, I, I, I like your line. I definitely love minus four. Um, but it's actually, you know, I, I prefer the money line and maybe you – um, do a little same game parlay and, and hit the under because I do think early on in the season you're going to see a lot of mistakes you're going to see a lot of penalties probably some holds some false starts maybe a legal procedure legal formation um, and, and I think numbers you know get down a little low in terms of this I think this is a high number for a Thursday night opening game 52 and a half points um and, and it's not that Kansas City doesn't want to win it, but Kansas City doesn't necessarily need to win this game. People will freak out, no doubt. They'll, they'll, it will be like the world is ending if somehow the Lions win this game. But for the Chiefs, I think for them, it's, it's almost a matter of survival. Let's get through this kind of the, I don't want to say circus atmosphere of it, but it kind of is on an NFL context. Um, get through it. And then we can start to focus, okay, Kelsey's back after 10 days off. Now let's get into the season. I don't know why I'm just kind of envisioning that, but that's just kind of the way I look at this game. Um, so I do like the under. I think we see some some cobwebs being shaken off a lot of because, like we said in preseason, you're just not seeing starters playing. So this is, for a lot of guys, the first time they're going to see some meaningful football. Um, and, and I think the Chiefs, unlike, you know, they've already, they're, they're such a proven commodity. These aren't the Rams who won the Super Bowl. And then basically that's when all the wheels started falling off of everything. The Chiefs, it's very important for them to maintain this dynasty look that they have already established. And I think it's important to them. It's important to the, for them to prove it to their owners too, the guys that write the checks, the Hunt family. So I don't see Kansas City missing a beat in this one. Yeah, it's going to be a great kickoff game. Can't really, I can't wait for it going forward. I hope it's a very competitive game. Um, everyone cashes their tickets, uh, but we shall see. Now it's time to focus our attention to kind of the meat of the schedule. That NFL Sunday, the first one of many before, of course, we tip our cats, tip our caps in February, but. We are going to start or keep it in the AFC West, I should say. It is the Las Vegas Raiders. They head to mile high against the Denver Broncos, a team I talked about a little bit earlier. The Broncos are three and a half point favorites. The over under is 43 and a half. There is no person in the world who gets the first word on Raider talk on this podcast network before Raider Jim. So, Mr. Martinez, what are your thoughts? Raiders head to mile high to start the season. Well, you might as well start out with one of the longest uh, 
the longest challenges you've ever seen in the AFC West. This goes back decades, the Broncos and the Raiders. Right off the bat, somebody's going to be a game behind in the standings. And this is very important for both teams. It's important, as we already spoke, for Sean Payton and Russell Wilson to go out there and start to establish themselves. And then, of course, for the Raiders, you got Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, Garoppolo's, I still say, is he good enough to make progress with the Raiders? Yes. Is he damaged goods? Yes. Do I hope he's 100%? I hope he really is. He's going to have enough targets to do that. They picked up Austin Hooper, who's going to be the starting tight end. They also picked up Jacoby Myers, and that's going to complement Hunter Renfro. Devontae Adams, and of course, as we mentioned, Josh Jacobs is back in the lineup. Very, very good. How good they are, though, is going to be dependent upon those five big bodies up front. And guess what? They have a great offensive line up front. They did wonders for Josh Jacobs and his stats last year. They're going to do the same again this year, I believe. The only new face you're going to see, I believe, is uh, Van Roten, who's the, the guard that they brought in. Other than that, you're going to have four of the five returning guys back. And just a few years ago, he was the new kid, the rookie. But all of a sudden, this has become Colton Miller's offensive line. So uh, Colton Miller and you've got Adams at center, or not Adams, James at center, uh, the two UCLA guys. If that offensive line can just establish who's in charge week in and week out, but especially tomorrow against the Broncos, I think it's going to be a good game. At minus three and a half going into this for the Broncos, of course, I'll take three and plus three and a half for the Raiders. And I do think it's going to go over 43 and a half. That's the line right now. But I think we're going to see some points out there. It's not unrealistic for me to see this being 23 to 21 at the end. That's 44 points. That puts you over the half point. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be, like, as you said, AFC West, uh, probably the premier rivalry, at least if you go back. Uh, I remember, you know, back here, you know, in San Diego, Charger fans, you know, when the Raiders would come to town, the Raider fans would be like, you're like number three or four on our hit list. Like it, the Broncos are number one, um, you know, uh, and, and that is the rivalry, even, you know, two very, very loyal fan bases. Obviously, I spent some I have family out in Denver and it's it's as close to a religion as you can get outside of, you know, the Midwest and in the Bears and the Packers. But two huge, hugely loyal fan bases. Um, and, and last game I talked about kind of, you know, Kansas city, maybe it's, it's just a game they're trying to survive and just be like, okay, you know, let's just get through it. This is just the opposite for these two teams. This is very, very important. As you said, Raider Jim, um, and, and big time divisional game, two teams that have aspirations and also have a lot to prove. Obviously, Jimmy G look, this is, I would have to imagine one of the worst, if not the worst defense he's ever been a part of. And that's no right. disrespect. It's just more talking it's, to it's the fact. Of, yeah. It, it's the, the point of the defense that he's had in the past, how good they've been. Unfortunately, he has um, relied heavily on those defenses. So I do wonder if the, um, if the Raiders can kind of get to that level knowing, look, if we could hold, if we could average, you know, 20, 20 to 22 points um, allowed per game, we're probably going to the postseason. Um, they're going to have to get a lot lower to be a real big time competitor. Um, but it's really an interesting, I'm going to see, I'm interested to see how this all plays out for the Raiders. You talked about Austin Hooper coming in, obviously Jimmy G as well. You know, Darren Waller, I think, was still better than Hooper. Obviously, there were other mitigating circumstances yeah. in terms of contract things. I, I understand that. Um, and then Derek Carr, I just, I'm sorry. If, if you hold a gun to my head, Derek Carr, I would rather have over Jimmy Garoppolo. But you will have Josh McDaniels kind of get his chance at it. In terms of this game, I do like the Raiders um, in this one. Plus three and a half, obviously. I'm a sucker for plus three and a half in the NFL. Um, so many games come down to a last second field goal. Plus three and a half, and it lets me just eat my popcorn and figure out, you know, how I'm going to, or, you know, whether it was uh, how easy the win was, essentially. Uh, plus three and a half, I like the Raiders there. Um, I, I do like the under here, and it's mainly kind of the, the thought process I had with Den, uh, Detroit and Kansas City in terms of 
early on, you know, opportunities, you know, maybe Russell Wilson um, is still kind of stubbing his toe here and there uh, going forward. And we don't see the big time points, um, even though this is a much lower number. I do want to see kind of what these offenses can do first before I do throw an over out there um, with these two, because I could very well see this being a 13 to seven or 14 to 10 game. And we're just going, uh oh, at least the Broncos aren't on prime time every other week like they were last year, at least. But and I don't want anybody to think that I overlooked the elephant in the room because I I hit on the offensive line, I hit on the targets, I hit on Garoppolo. Let me tell you, it's also contingent. How The success of the Raiders is going to be contingent upon, did they at all improve their defense, which ended up, again, something like 28th in the league last year. They ha- they were referred to again in the uh, off-season talks by a lot of people as the sieve, because they are. I mean, for gosh sakes, they had, uh, they had their middle linebacker quit in the middle of the year because he sold a Pokemon card. When you have stuff like that going on, uh, it doesn't make it easier for you. And and he, um, Max Crosby, fantastic guy, but he can't be the only guy out there that's given pressure. Now, the young man they brought in, the first-round draft pick, whose name is escaping me right now, I think he is going to be a great player. He's going to really, really, really help. I think he's going to be enough so that maybe – he does a little bit of Von Miller type stuff where he's just dancing all over the place and he's going to mature quickly. If they can do that. If they can keep their secondary, they don't have to improve a lot to be better than last year and the year before. So if they can do that, then they're going to be competitive. Yeah. And, and I think one of the main things that Jimmy G does bring to this offense, I think he's going to protect the football better than Carr did. Uh, with all due respect to to Carr, he was more that gunslinger, for better or worse. Um, you know, kind of the Philip Rivers, Brett Favre type, where yeah, he's probably going to throw for three hundred yards and three touchdowns, but he might sprinkle in some really bad interceptions. I don't think Jimmy G's going to do that, but it is going to be what this defense can do. But I do think this weekend, um, uh, this Sunday, I should say, the the Raiders do enough to cover that spread um, at three and a half. So staying in the AFC West. It is the final team uh, that we'll be talking about in that division. It's, uh, the Miami Dolphins heading to the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are three point favorites. The over under is 51. Raider Jim, what are your thoughts on the final AFC West matchup we'll be talking about? Well, I'll tell you. Here's one thing. Maybe I should have covered it in, in the opening remarks. Um, I don't want to see anybody's career cut short. I want everybody to get the most they can because these guys train so hard and it's their livelihood and it's what they want to do. But for Tua to go back out there after the beating he took last year and then somebody was proclaiming in one article I read this week, yeah, but this year he's going to have this new helmet that's supposed to be better when his head hits the ground. Hmm. See, that's not really how it works because that doesn't stop your brain from slamming up against the side of your head, which is what knocks you out and causes all the problems. So, uh, you know, God willing, nothing happens to this man. And I I think that's going to be the biggest thing for Miami right now is keeping him safe and healthy because the minute he goes down, it's going to just throw their offense into turmoil. As far as this game goes on this coming Sunday, I think, at home, the Chargers, I'm surprised it's only three, but uh, I think minus three is a safe line. I definitely like the Chargers minus three, but I think there's going to be points on the board. So I went back and forth. It was 51, and then I saw 50 and a half. I'll take 50 and a half and take the over on that. Yeah, um, unfortunately. You know, my question, and maybe you know Raider Jim, but we see on training camp and practices – they have these helmets with like, I don't know if they're like, it's just extra padding, like on the top. It, it looks like, um, like really small pillows, like a bunch of really small pillows they put over the helmets. What, what, why don't we use those in games? I mean, and that might be something similar to what they're talking about because they basically were saying it's more of an absorption thing. Yeah. When he hits the, you know, if the person hits the ground, whoever. Yeah. Hits and, and I think that's that's been one of the biggest questions i've always had is 
because I look at rugby and rugby is a very violent game. And, and I don't know, I'm sure rugby has their, their CTE incidents, but sometimes I do wonder if maybe at times of the, is the helmet more of the weapon than anything because of where people's heads are and things like that. Is there a way to, to just get that, you know, under control, but that was just a thought that popped into my head, but that's the thought when you when you're talking about unfortunately the Miami Dolphins. I mean, the one thing I said to my buddy when we talked we were talking about this game, I said this is the only game I can guarantee you that Tua is going to start this season. You can't guarantee me he's going to start any other game other than this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Um and that's really sad and and you know, um at the end of the day, I I think Best case scenario is Tua goes on to have a fantastic career. Um, but you also in the back of your mind know every time he gets tackled. Um, and I do hope that he's under more of a mic. I honestly hope all quarterbacks and all players are under more of a microscope after what happened. But I, I would at least hope that w- the silver lining that comes out of Tua from last year and all that stuff was that this year they're going to not only take it seriously, but maybe even overreact to everything. Um, and I hope it doesn't affect too much, but I, I want to see us go, wow, that wouldn't have happened last year with Tua and the Miami training staff. I hope that that happens. In terms of this weekend, um, I just, I I think this is a game that the Chargers are not ready for. Once again, if Miami's on all cylinders, this the speed of this team is incredible to me. So I'm going to buy a half a point. I do like Miami plus three and a half um, in this one, but I agree with you there. I do like the over um, going forward. I think Miami uses their speed to, at the very least, keep them in it. Um, and I don't know, maybe the ta- the bad taste of, what was it, 27 nothing at halftime uh, in last year's playoffs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's still there, yeah. And, and this is a game for the Chargers that, if you've looked over the last five years, this is kind of a game that they lose, uh, a game that everyone just kind of expects, okay, here come the Chargers, they're going to get rolling, and all of a sudden they stub their toe. Um, so we'll see about that going forward. Uh, but I do like the Dolphins uh, as, you know, plus three and a half, just cover myself. But points are definitely going to be scored in this one. Moving on to uh, my side of the tracks, if you will, it is the NFC East uh, first game we'll be talking about is, of course, the defending NFC champions, the Philadelphia Eagles. They're going to head to Foxborough. The Eagles are four-point favorites. Uh, the over-under is 45. Uh, myself, I'm going to get this one started, obviously. Um, it was a fantastic, another fantastic offseason for the Eagles. Uh, a really good draft. It's looking like everything's working out with the Jalen Carter Obviously, we haven't heard anything on the um, out, outside of the football side of things. Uh, you know, there were some um, character issues. The reason he probably dropped down to the Eagles at nine. We haven't really seen that in Philadelphia yet, as I knock on wood. Um, but at the same time, we've heard everything that, you know, he's a good kid, bad situation, blah, blah, blah. Well, he's getting his second chance in Philly. Um, the defense does look really good um, going forward. Jalen Hurts also you know, didn't really play in the post or in the preseason. I should say a little bit of a concern, Marcus Mariota. um, He did not look good. And I'm being as nice as humanly possible. This is a family show or else there would be other words being used. Um, But so that is a bit of a concern. Now, obviously, you know, look, the the, the Eagles are in trouble, no matter who's their backup, regardless, because if Jalen Hurts goes down, that's going to be difficult. Uh, But I do think the Eagles get the job done in this uh, this situation, um, it's early season, Foxborough, so you don't have to worry about weather. Um, I, I like the Eagles money line on this one. You're not going to get a ton of value, so maybe find another um, parlay to get this into. Um, I don't know about the minus four. I it, It's an interesting one on the road. I just like the Eagles money line. I think they do enough uh, to get the win. They may need to get an extra or a last second field goal. They may blow the team out. I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident the Eagles do get the win. So money line it on my side. Um, and then on the over under, um, I like the under here. I, I'm very, very bullish on the Eagles defense. Mac Jones is going to have a hard time um, avoiding the pressure and really reading this defense. 
Um, a lot of continuity here. Obviously, the Eagles did lose their defensive coordinator, lost C.J. Gardner-Johnson as well, um, and some linebackers. But I think that there's enough to step in and get the job done and, and fill in those gaps. And I tell you what, the Eagles have the best offensive and defensive line in football, and I don't think you can argue that. Um, one through five, you know, maybe not depth-wise on the offensive side of the ball. The Eagles on the defensive side of the ball, their second-tier defensive linemen might be a top 15 unit by themselves. Um, so there's going to be a lot of rotation in and out, so keep an eye on that. I think it's going to be a long day for the Patriot defense or a Patriot offense. Eagles get the job done. Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you answered the question I was going to ask you is how do you think they've been impacted today, the Eagles? by the loss of coaches, by the loss of players from last year's teams. But it seems to be that uh, almost that hockey approach, send three guys over over the wall and send three guys over the wall, and all of a sudden we haven't missed a step. We still got guys on the ice, and we're still coming at you hard. And I think that's what the Eagles are going to be this year. Minus four, no problem. And on the other side of that, New England, uh, as I was trying, you know, what, what do I say about the New England Patriots? And I had to have an analogy. My analogy was they're kind of like, not that I've even seen these movies, but it seems they are like the NFL Ocean's Eleven franchise. They come out every year. They make one every year. But it's the same thing every year. And each one gets a little more boring, a little less entertaining. And I think, you know, New England has already shown that they are not New England anymore. Nobody quakes in their boots because they're playing the Patriots uh, or the guy with the hood, with the hoodie. You know, they, it just, it's okay, you're our opponent and that's it. They aren't going to have an offense. They're not going to score. So like you, I did take my, or I took Philadelphia minus four, but I have to go under on this one. Yeah, it's going to be uh it's going to be a long day, I think, for the Patriots. And just going back to what you brought up with, you know, obviously, look, defensive coordinator side of things, um, a lot of question marks. Look, that that Super Bowl, uh, I, no adjustments were made, first and foremost, unfortunately. I saw that uh, coming a mile away, at least in the second half. Um, so I, I'm not stressing that loss too much. And the other part of it, you know, losing safety and, and middle linebackers like TJ Edwards, the best part about what the Eagles have done and, and really what Howie and the scouting staff has done is there's there's Blankenship who's going to step up, step in. He's been with the team for a few years, so he's been in the system. You're not relying on other guys coming in and, okay, it might take you five or six weeks to fully grasp what we need you to do. N'Kobe Dean was picked up a few years ago. Someone I looked at and said, wow, this guy could be starting on our team right away. They brought other guys in to kind of fill that and, and make his transition to that starter. I'm really excited to see what he can bring to the table um, as well. But I do think the Eagles kind of internal development has been very key because there's just a, a passing of the torch, you know, um, going forward. These guys fit the mold of what the Eagles need them to be rather than bringing in a free agent where it might take half a year to get them there. Um, but we shall see how that goes going down in Foxborough this weekend. Not too many times. I, I, I have to look that up. Uh, if, if um, since Belichick has been there, if the, the Patriots have been underdogs at home um, week one. Uh, I, I think it's got to be very, very few and far between um, for that one, because I think this is, like you said, the first year that the luster of the Patriots mm -hmm. is not really there. Um, so, but staying in the NFC East, it's Sunday night football, um, a big rivalry game. It is the Dallas Cowboys. They'll be heading to, New Jersey to face the New York Giants. The Cowboys are three point favorites. The over under here sits at 46. And earlier when we um, started the show, I talked about the competition level and the difference. Um, the AFC is just a gauntlet and the NFC is, well, it's a gauntlet for uh, certain teams, but for others, it's just about, okay, who are we going to face, you know, when it's all kind of the final four, if you will, uh, because I think the Eagles and Niners are far and away better than any other team in the conference. And you could make a case. And I hate I, I hate the Cowboys more than anyone, but you can make a case that the Cowboys are the third best team in this conference. 
Um, you could maybe make a case that they could win the division. That's fine. I don't believe you, but okay. Um, in this game, I think the Cowboys do get rolling. I think the Giants have some issues that they're not quite ready to t- to tackle. Literally, um, they gave Daniel Jones a lot of money and then barely got some crumbs together to give to pay Saquon Barkley for one year. I. I don't know how hard Saquon Barkley is going and should be going this year. Let's just put it that way because he sees the running back kind of landscape and he knows, okay, I'm not going to get paid a lot of money in a long-term deal um, that I think. So what's his next choice? The Giants chose Daniel Jones over Saquon Barkley. I think they, they regret that decision. I think we see Daniel Jones come back to earth. I think he was more one of the over more, excuse me, one of the more overrated quarterbacks in football last year. Okay. Good story. But when, when rubber really met the road, he wasn't good when it was time for him to be good. Okay. You beat Kirk cousins. That was nice. But in Philadelphia, he, he fell apart. Um, So this, these are big bright lights games Um, in New York. There is so much expectations for the giants. I think this is an easy one. I got Dallas. I'm not even going to buy a half a point. I got Dallas minus three. um, And I do like the under. I just think the Dallas defense is going to end up being too much for Daniel Jones. The only reason we might get any, something close to an over is either garbage time or Daniel Jones turns the ball over and sets the Cowboys up into some really good territory. I don't know. I'm not very high on the giants this year and I'm higher than most people on the Cowboys. So maybe it's my own bias fighting back. But that's my thoughts. Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Yeah, now that I can go back and refer to my uh, the notes that I had written for myself for the NFC East, I really think it's going to be Philadelphia uh, runs away with it in the East. And I yeah. think Washington is going to surprise people. It's going to be Philadelphia, then Washington underneath, fighting it out with the Cowboys, who are once again going to underachieve. And I asked myself the question, is it really underachieving if nobody outside of Dallas thinks they're contenders? Because that's what I see here. Jerry's going to tell you they are. They're going to tell you they are. But when it comes right down to it, they they were just they're kind of they're a good team. They're not a very good team. They're not an excellent team. Uh, and I think that's what they're going to run into this year. They're running a different offensive scheme, or they've they've tweaked the offensive scheme a little bit, which uh, somebody they refer the, the coordinator refers to it as the Texas Coast offense trying to make the play on the West Coast offense uh phrase and then uh, i saw a writer he said give it halfway through the season it's going to be the texas post offense because it's going to get exposed so but i think in this game they're going to win on the other side of the ball i think we've got the giants who not much different than what you said 2022 to me seems like more of a fluke than anything and it's going to be a rough start for these guys because in 2023 seven of their first First 10 games are on the road and there is one span where they're going to play three games in 11 days i like saquon but my gosh that's putting a lot on him and that's that's a lot of beating for that guy so uh my you know my heart goes out to these guys for the schedule they've got and it's a all uphill though and on sunday even though they're going to be at home i think it's going to be a disappointing game for the giant fans I do like the half points. I'll take Cowboys two and a half, but I'm definitely with you that it's going to be the under. Yeah. And and I really do think a lot of the, the success that the Giants had last year was Saquon Barkley running for a contract, if you will. Yeah. And now he ran for that contract, didn't get it, and kind of looks around and goes, wait, you want me to do this again? Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, I, and like I said, I, I don't know. And now, once again, I don't know with Saquon Barkley, and I'm not making it seem like that's his only, um, you know, motivating factor, blah, blah, blah. But it, it, it is a motivating factor. I can guarantee you that, um, you know, how much it, it, it weighs on him. That's another question, but I know it weighs on him. So we'll see how that is going forward. And, um, you know, going to be an interesting NFC East going forward as well but speaking of that we are if i could back up one game yep uh, if we could back up to the uh, eagles new england game Uh one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the lines 
apparently there's a very, very, very good chance it's going to be warm and raining in New England, hmm. in Foxborough on Sunday. Interesting. Yeah. You know, uh, warm and raining in Foxborough. Those, those aren't. Yeah. Like, like in the yeah. mid to high seventies with rain. That wow. could be that tropical storm stuff that's going on. Yeah. It may have worked its way up. And I know there's another, I think a hurricane just actually got upgraded. That's correct. Uh, but that's, that's, I think next week or something. I, best of luck to everyone in Florida, unfortunately, at the, or the Gulf, I should and say. And that will apply Florida. also to the game we're going to talk about next. Okay. There you go. It is, uh, Washington, uh, or Arizona heading to Washington to face the commanders. The line, uh, has the commanders as seven point favorites. <laughs> the over under here is 38 points. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, I still managed to say this game is going to go under. Um, look, this is the Arizona Cardinals who I don't know what the what the what the saying is or the chant is yet, but it's essentially choke for Caleb. That is the situation. They have the lowest win total um on in in Vegas essentially since I think uh the Jaguars in like uh, 1995, something like that. I don't know the exact number, but they have a three and a half uh, over under win total at Vegas. Um, this is not going to be one of them, at least in my mind. I think Washington, now I am going to take a half a point here just to get that to six and a half. Um, but I do think Washington probably takes care of business by more than that. But just to kind of cover myself, Kyler Murray, not healthy. Will he be healthy? I don't know. Um, and then we're also seeing reports, Raider Jim, I don't know if you saw, but <laughs> I don't know if this is just timing or what, but Caleb Williams' uh, father essentially came out and said, look, the worst part about being drafted number one is you're going to a broken system. Possibly he gets drafted and then we oh. just decide he's going back to school. Uh, once again, I don't know if that's uh, the early signs of an Eli Manning, uh, San Diego. I, I was just going to say that. You know, yeah. You know, and hey, look, it worked out for Eli. Look, what, and we all hated Eli here in San Diego. But ironically, now what? 20 years, 30 years later, all of San Diego hates Spanos, just like Manning hated Spanos. So we all come to the same side eventually, apparently, anyway. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of throwing a... Um, you know, a flare up that there it might not be as easy as just sucking and then getting a player like Caleb Williams in the draft. But in terms of this game, look, Josh Dobbs is going to be starting for um, Arizona. And at the very least, this is a skeleton of a roster. Um, best of luck. As crazy as it seems, I don't think the over three and a half is a terrible number. Sometimes you can fall forward for four wins in the NFL. Um, they are still NFL players, but that's kind of a soapbox thing. Um, but I do think that Washington takes care of business handily here. Um, I, I am going to stay under because I don't think Washington has that it, that offense that you that goes, oh man, they put up 31 points by themselves. There goes the under in this one. I could see Washington you know, putting up 24 points and you watching that game going, wow, they really dominated but not on that way that Kansas city or those big high scoring offenses can dominate. So I'll, I'll keep it on, on the under on a 38 as ridiculous as that sounds, but Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? Yeah. You know, my heart goes out to the Arizona Cardinal fan base. My heart, I will keep Josh Dobbs in my prayers on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> it's just going to be bad. If you'd have told me four weeks ago, if you would have said, okay, just, give us a random prediction and i i was not going to sit down and say well washington's going to be a seven point favorite on opening day really who would say that uh but that's here's that's what we're looking at and like you washington i believe is just going to put this one away but i took a half a point i'm going to take them at six and a half and like you i already have in my notes it's going to be under 38 mainly because arizona's not going to score probably it's going to be real hard you know a lot of kick a lot of field goals maybe and then again like the game in new england it's going to be raining up over there so that's just one more you know literally one more element that arizona has to deal with yeah it's, it's gonna and, be a long interestingly year. enough the other thing i the other note i saw about the uh commanders is i actually saw ron revere's name on a list of 
coaches who are already on the hot seat. And I think he was top of the list. Yikes. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who's who's gotten the most pulp out of uh, a fruit that didn't seem the juiciest I've ever seen. I mean, he 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 got to the playoffs with yeah. I mean, Alex Smith uh, coming back, and I don't even remember who was the quarterback to start that, and I think it ended up finally with Sam Heineke. Now he's got Sam Howell. Um, he's had arguably the worst owner in the NFL in Dan yeah. Snyder. I mean, the, that the situation. Point. Yeah, I, I mean, he's point. a cancer survivor going through COVID and all that, and he's on the hot seat. I sure hope that that's not something um, going forward. He got that team to the playoffs with all going through all that adversity over the last couple of seasons. And how many times do we talk about the cancer in the clubhouse? And usually it's a player, it's an Antonio Brown, et cetera, et cetera. But imagine if it's the guy who writes, who signs your paycheck that is the cancer, the biggest cancer. And they were even able to fight through that. They're already starting a lot more in the black than the red this year. And that's why the other reason that I think they're really going to push hard and, and really, really make a challenge for second place in these. Yeah. I, I, the, my only, I guess, hold up is I do think there are limitations. Um, and maybe I'm wrong about Sam Howell. I guess I'm just not a believer yet, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I think we need to see um, something um going forward you know right now i think dak is still a better quarterback between those two i was interested to not see them in the trey lance situation because i do think that defense is so good they have some good weapons um but you know sam howell is going to get the keys to that car um and you know what if 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 ron rivera truly is on the hot seat i wish the best for sam howell kind of like you said for russell wilson uh minus two two weeks out of the year uh, best of luck to the Commanders. Uh, they've obviously been through a lot, except for those two weeks that they will play the Eagles. I think they'll feel just fine, though. Um, this is kind of like the fourth preseason game for them, facing uh, the, the Arizona Cardinals uh, this opener. Moving on to a uh, matchup of two of the most successful franchises in NFL history. It's been a little bit since we've seen these two teams lift the Lombardi Trophy, but it is the San Francisco 49ers. They will head to Pittsburgh, uh, and it's uh, the Niners are two and a half point favorites. The over under sits at forty one. Raider Jim, I'll give you the honors to get this one started. Uh, the Niners head to Pittsburgh as favorites. This is going to be a fantastic game. Hard hitting. Uh, Steelers have something to prove after last year's kind of disappointing season. Disappointing in in uh, terms of the Steelers. One thing that I just checked again, and we're going to have to keep in mind, it's going to be raining in Pittsburgh. In the 70s, it's going to be raining. So I had over 40 and a half on my ticket here. And I think they can still maybe get to that 40, 41 mark, 42 possibly, I thought. But with the rain, I'm not really sure because I think Pittsburgh's defense is going to be redefined. And I think it's going to be a little more... Uh, a little closer than everybody thinks. I don't think there's going to be as many points on the board. I might have to go the other direction and change it by a point at 42 and stay under 42. I also think Pittsburgh is going to uh, have a great home opener and I'll take Pittsburgh plus three. Yeah, I was wavering back and forth on this one, um, even with, yeah. you know, the Bosa situation, because I, I really do think Kenny Pickett um, I don't know if he's that franchise quarterback like Ben, Big Ben was, but I, I think Kenny Pickett can can win some games for you. Um, I, I don't know if this is one of them. The elements also kind of even things up. But Brock Purdy, for me, maybe I'm, you know, I, I, I don't want to say the O word in terms of, you know, overrated, but I, I want to see more out of this kid. I want to see a lot of film on Brock Purdy and see him adjust to what defensive coordinators they've had a whole off season to, to break down the film of Brock Purdy. Um, so we're going to see if they've uh, caught, ca caught up and then if Brock Purdy can adjust going forward. Um, I did take San Francisco, but it's not a very confident pick. Same thing. I, I did put the over, um, but the, the elements might kind of switch everything back. So this is a tough one for me. I think, like you said, we're going to see a hard hitting game. 
two teams oh, yeah. that um, have a lot to prove uh, for different reasons. Obviously, the 49ers are expected to be a very good team, and I think a lot of people don't expect the, the Steelers. However, like I said, after what the Niners went through last year in the NFC Championship game, you know, they spent the whole offseason talking about what, um, you know, what if, what if, what if. Well, Pittsburgh's kind of the same way. Uh, what if Kenny Pickett can be good? We're going to see it. It's a big test for him early on. Um, I, I'm starting to lean there with you, Raider Jim. I, I, you know, Pittsburgh, give me uh, the the half point, maybe plus three. And I do like the under now, um, you know, just to kind of, you know, with the elements and the defenses coming together, maybe a perfect storm pun, not really intended there. But um, that's this is definitely not one, even if it was week like 14 and I had a better bearing on it, I still probably wouldn't touch it because it's just such a, bit of a toss up here especially with that number hovering around uh two and a half and three it's kind of a recipe for disaster so might just want to sit back and watch this one and enjoy the hard-hitting action so next one is um the tennessee titans they are heading to nolens to face the saints the saints are three and a half point favor or excuse me three point favorites the over under sits at 41 raider jim I'll give you first crack at this one, Tennessee at the Saints. Yeah, no rain in this one, and it's going to be, uh, you know, the debut of Derek Carr in his new home. Here's the issue with Tennessee. Tennessee going back to, uh, you know, some of the other teams that we've talked about and we will talk about. It seems like they've had their chances, and they never could just make that final push and go all the way. You do still have Tannehill. You still have Derrick Henry, but you know, are their best days behind them? They're going to be a competitive team by all means. They might very well win their division, but boy, they're going to have to work at it this year. New Orleans, on the other hand, uh, nobody's going to be that worried that Alvin Kamara is not in the game because they've got Jamal Williams. They've got Kendra Miller. They've got a healthy Derek Carr. They've got a fantastic defense. And because of that fantastic defense, New Orleans gets this one. I am going to take the half point and go two and a half on it. I'm going to go maybe a half a point the other way and go under 41 and a half. Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat there with you on New Orleans. Um, give me give me the, the minus three and a half just to kind of cover myself. Uh, I think one of the biggest changes sceneries, uh, maybe in, in sports, is going to be uh, Derek Carr. Now, obviously, look, the cities of Vegas and New Orleans are, are, are very similar for a lot of reasons. Uh, so that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is surroundings and competition. He went from arguably the best division for quarterbacks to inarguably the worst division for quarterbacks. And I mean, with the, with the most respect to these guys, but there's no doubt in my mind that Derek Carr is the best quarterback in this division. He was not close to that in the AFC West. Um, you know, last year being the number three quarterback might have been his his peak uh, there just because Herbert and Mahomes are so good. Uh, so so a big difference for Carr. Um, and I think he embraces it. I think the Saints win this division. Um, you know, if you're looking for a future bet, I think the Saints are a pretty good pick to win the, in a pretty wide open NFC South as well. Um, and they get rolling here early as well. It's a lot of weapons. Dennis Allen is a good coach that's kind of learned mm -hmm. under Sean Payton. Sean Payton was the first coach ever, obviously, to win in that city, in that um, in that area. And he learned uh, or he passed that knowledge down to uh, Dennis Allen. I think we're going to see the Saints start to kind of get back, maybe not to the breeze, Reggie Bush, you know, championship days but to the point where the saints are a force to be reckoned with in the South every single year. Um, and this, this is uh, a game that I'm feeling pretty confident about new Orleans uh, to cover that three and a half. Um, I do like the over here. Uh, I do think we are going to see some points. This is the healthiest or the, I should say we're the, it's the freshest. We're going to see Derek Henry uh, going forward. I don't know how many broken tackles that body has left, um, but, you know, this is, like I said, the freshest we'll see him going forward. So I do see some points being scored, as we said, in a dome. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So I will take the over 41. And, and you mentioned the game oh, yep. that I was going to I was going to bring this up before we went on to the next game. 
Think about what happened the last time an AFC West quarterback went to New Orleans and remember what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A contentious decision. There were a lot of people who said, I don't know if that was the right thing uh, to do. Um, although I will say that I think this is a bigger question mark. Obviously, the Drew Brees oh, situation, you know, because a lot of people forget uh, Drew Brees had to have major, major. Was it his shoulder? I'm pretty sure it was his shoulder, his knee, but I'm pretty sure it was his shoulder. Major shoulder surgery um, that made the decision pretty easy for the Chargers. They had a young Philip Rivers almost worked out for him. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Derek Carr, uh, how he handles uh the NFC South, but I think he'll be just fine, especially with the weapons they brought in. Switching gears to the final game of the weekend. It is Monday night football. It is the Buffalo Bills. They will head to um, New Jersey as well. Wow. Back-to-back -back games, unless I have that wrong. Back-to-back -back games in New Jersey. Um, just realizing that now. So maybe that's something to think about for this game. Uh, the, the, the field crew is going to have to be on their uh, mind and their P's and Q's there. But anyway, uh, back to the task at hand. Buffalo, two and a half point favorites at the Jets. The over-under is 46 and a half. Raider Jim, what are your thoughts? I hate to see Aaron Rodgers' debut get spoiled, but I think that's what's going to happen this time. I think Buffalo's going to come out. It's. I think there's going to be points. Rodgers is going to be able to do what he usually does. It's just not going to be enough. So Buffalo by two and a half, not a problem. Over 46, not a problem. Uh, I just really think that uh, this that was the wrong opponent to put out there for the Jets' uh, home opener. And as far as Buffalo goes, I will tell you on the season outlook, I'm not sure that they are going to be uh, the contender that they were in the past couple of years. I mean, they kind of they, they missed the mark last year. And are they really going to be solid this year, solid enough to come back and uh, rule the roost? I don't think so. Yeah, it's that window that a lot of people talk about the window, the Super Bowl window. Um, and that that window in Buffalo, I think a lot of people are thinking it's it's getting pretty tight. Um, and it's pretty crazy considering, you know, it seemed like it just opened up two years ago and now we're talking about it closing. Um, but that's kind of what happens in the AFC when there's been this kind of power dynamic where the chiefs look around and go, who's going to be the one to stand up. And we all look at it's Buffalo, but the last few years it's been Cincinnati. Um, so right. I think at some point we kind of just go, you know what? Okay. Cincinnati's the, the, the heir apparent, if you will. And Buffalo will just kind of be there um, at some point in one way or another. Um, I don't know about that anymore. Um, there's a lot of question marks, kind of some bickering going on. Uh, Stefan Diggs is a very, very good player, but you better keep him happy or else, you know, and, and look, emotions run high. You're going to see quarterbacks yelling at um, receivers or vice versa all the time. Doesn't necessarily mean anything, but sometimes it does. Um, but in terms of this one, I agree with you. I think Buffalo gets the job done. Um, I think the Jets, it's going to be a little tough uh, for them. I think they're going to have a little bit of buyer's remorse. Not that they really gave anything up terribly, if I if I remember correctly. Uh, maybe they did. I don't know. I could be getting that wrong. But I don't think Aaron Rodgers um, changes a ton for the Jets. I no. think he's, I don't want to say washed up because um, I don't like that term. But I think he has peaked, and I think his better days are behind him. Um, and, you know, I saw a, a tweet, you know, because last year everyone was, you know, well, maybe not just last year, but the, the theme of every all the fans is, oh, the NFL is scripted. You know, everyone's saying, oh, the, the script is out. First play of the new season, Damar Hamlin picks off Aaron Rodgers uh, for a pick six. So who knows? Maybe that's in the cards going forward. But I do think the Buffalo Bills get the job done. But I'm with you on the over-under. I think we're going to see some points being scored. This is a division game. Aaron Rodgers is going to go out yeah. there, you know, uh, sling the ball all over the place. Uh, but I, 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 I'm not sure that the Jets have enough firepower to get into a shootout with Buffalo, who does have their limitations, I believe. But I don't think the Jets are close to that limitation. But we shall see. 
And finally, uh, the final game we'll be talking about this weekend. It is a very interesting rivalry that's been, you know, I think one of the oldest uh, rivalries in all of the NFL, but definitely a different look to it. It is the Green Bay Packers. They will head to Soldier Field to face the Chicago Bears. The Bears are one point favorites in this one. Uh, and the over under sits at 43 Raider Jim. What are your thoughts? Packers and bears at soldier field. Well, it is going to be dry. Okay. In Chicago. So that's one good thing. The line right now that I see is still minus one. The over under is 43. Got to go money line on this one. Got to go under in this one, because quite honestly, I would have probably given green Bay the nod in this one. However, I just read something before you hit record that says Christian Watson and Romeo uh, Dobbs, uh, Jordan Love's two receivers, may not play. Mm -hmm. So that would really put a damper on things for the Green Bay offense. On the other side, you got Justin Fields, who uh, is probably going to run like crazy, like he did last year. I think he's just going to continue where he left off. I think they're going to have an okay game. Uh, it's not going to be anything to write home about, but they're going to do enough to, uh, again, get that money line bet. But I'm I'm thinking it's going to be under 43 in this one. I agree. Um, and and I'm with you on both those. Under 43. Um, I like Chicago money line. I, I just really, I don't know what it is. And I think maybe it's the infatuation, which is crazy because I can't stand Ohio State. My, my <laughs> father was a, a huge Penn State fan. So, you know, OSU, um, those three letters together are not allowed to be uttered. Um, so it's crazy, though, but I, I've always been infatuated with Justin Fields since he played at Ohio State. He just looks like a creative player in Madden that you get to just, I mean, throw power 99. I mean, some of the championship game throws he was throwing are just incredible. Yeah. Um, and obviously, he might be the most athletic player when he's on the field in 80 to 90% of the games he's in, which is just crazy. Um, I have really high hopes for not only him. I think he took great steps forward. I think it's Matt Eberflus who's there, which I hope so because I love that name. Um, but he took steps forward that a lot of people kind of talked about the same progression that we saw with Jalen Hurts. And I'm not putting that pressure on Justin Fields or anything, but we sure. saw Jalen Hurts a few years back. We saw, oh, okay, there's some spots that he can throw the ball because he has Jalen had the same knock that Justin has right now. He's a running back, playing quarterback. Well, I think Jalen put a lot of those naysayers to rest, at least for last year, and I'm one of those people too. We need to see it back-to-back -back years. I think we will, but my point being, I think we see Justin Fields step forward and and really look like the team that or excuse me the quarterback that we and that i expected to see coming out of ohio state um and i think they get started here i think the packers are going to struggle a little bit with the jordan love kind of the new um once you have a, a quarterback like aaron Rodgers, that persona that um you know character if you will it's kind of hard to to separate yourself. And I think it's going to take a few weeks for Jordan Love to get comfortable and, and for everyone to just kind of understand, okay, it's not Aaron Rodgers. Um, and I, I think there are still some Packer fans that haven't fully accepted that, and it'll take a few weeks. Nothing like seeing Jordan Love start against Chicago week one to kind of shock you into it. But I just think Chicago gets the job done, especially at only minus one. I mean, this is essentially a pick em. I think it's a pretty straightforward pick. Um, give me the Bears and the under. I don't think we see I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. I do, too. I think we are going to see some mistakes being made. You're going to see very young quarterbacks uh, getting out there. Not a whole lot of ex not a whole lot of experience. And if you're talking about, you know, Jordan Love losing his top, top two targets, we're talking about even more uh, players that, you know, Probably going to see a lot of guys making their debuts on that wide receiver core. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But those are the games and the, the, the topics we're going to be covering here on this episode. Raider Jim, your final thoughts for week one of the NFL Weekly. Just a promise to anybody who is paying attention to this podcast, I guarantee you next week we're going to be 
a lot better on having more details because we'll get to see the actors, what they do on stage, and we'll be able to tell me, we'll be able to tell you how they are going to play out their roles during the rest of the season. Amen. And uh, I think that that will continue to compound as well. Uh, just continued. And that's the that's the only thing you really can do is hopefully by week 17 or week 18, at the very least, you somewhat think you've got it all figured out. Uh, but if you think you've got it all figured out by week one, um, I got some uh, beach side uh, property in Oklahoma to sell you. But my final thoughts are um, as we, you know, by the time Monday rolls around, it will be that fateful day. It will be September 11th. And, you know, for a lot of us who lived through that, uh, it's a day that we will never forget. And, you know, that's what we talked about the days after never forgetting. But one thing that is I'm always reminded of when the day rolls around, um, you see a post about it. September 11th was a terrible day for this country. And as crazy as it sounds, I want to go back to September 12th because that was when it didn't matter who you voted for. It didn't matter what you thought about this. It didn't matter what you thought about that. It didn't matter who you picked. It didn't matter who you, who you cheer for. We're all American. We're all essentially on one team. Um, and uh, obviously um, we are not that right now. And uh, I don't know. I'm always reminded of that in September 11th that kind of unity that unfortunately the worst situations always seem to kind of bring us together. Um, we've seen it, you know, in a, in a lot of different ways, even in the Maui situation, the Maui wildfires, um, people come in together. So try to kind of stay ahead of that curve and come together before the tragedy strikes. But at the same time, obviously, you know, remember all those who, who not only, um, you know, were lost on that day, but also, uh, uh, still feel the effects of it, whether it's family members or people who survived uh, that catastrophic. So once again, just uh, keep them in your thoughts and truly never forget. But with that being said, thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the NFL Weekly presented by the first Off the Bench Podcast Network. Everyone comes off the bench. We are first. It's time for you all to go wash your hands and stop hating everybody. We'll talk to you all very soon. Take care. That's it.